Behind me here, I have the Elite Screens Aeon Series 120 inch ALR edge free screen. And today I'm gonna to be going over it with you guys. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So like I said, today's video is going to be focused on the assembly and performance of the Elite Screens Aeon ALR projector screen. Now, since I have an open basement with my theater room, I decided to go with the Cinegray 3D screen, which is an ambient light rejecting material. ALR materials are great for rooms that have little to no control over the lighting in the viewing area. It allows for the projected image to have better contrast and color accuracy when there is outside light sources from different angles hitting the screen. Now, it's not uncommon for us to have friends and family over for either sporting events or video game nights, so oftentimes the lights are left on over the bar or the dartboard area. I wanted to see how well the Cinegray 3D ALR material maintained the image quality with several different light sources in the room. Now, this isn't quite DIY, but there is some assembly involved with this screen, so we'll go over that first before we dive into the performance. First, make sure you have an open area big enough on your floor for the entire screen and some room to work around it. The box comes with everything you need for assembly, but you will need a few tools including a Phillips head screwdriver, a drill preferably, stud finder, and a tape measure. Elite Screens provides a foam pad to lay on the ground so there's no damage to your flooring or the screen. First, you'll lay out the aluminum frame. There are two end pieces and four pieces that make up the top and bottom. Each joint is connected with two plates and four screws. The top and bottom pieces are connected with straight plates and the corners are joined with angled plates. Once the frame is assembled, you'll move it out of the way, put on your provided fancy white gloves, and roll out the screen. You'll want the front of the screen facing towards the ground, and you can verify this by making sure the backside marking is facing up. Next is probably the worst and most time consuming part of the assembly. Each one of these 104 holes around the edge of the screen needs one of these two piece grommets installed. You'll quickly realize that the fancy white gloves they provided are impossible to use while putting these in. Elite Screen says they don't ship with these installed as they may distort or imprint the material while rolled up during shipping. While I get that, this was, like I said, the worst part of the install and hopefully they can find a way around this in the future. Four to six days later. With all of the grommets installed, grab the assembled frame and lay it carefully on the screen, lining up the edges with the markings on the back. Next, to attach the screen to the frame, you'll attach the provided springs through the grommets and hook them into the raised lip on the frame. Using the provided hook, attach a few springs to the middle of each side to center the screen. Then go around attaching the rest of the springs to the screen and frame. When you're done, the screen corners should be right on the edge of the frame and the screen properly tensioned to remove any waves or wrinkles. Last, you'll attach the center screen support by setting it in the frame groove at an angle, then sliding it into place on the opposite side of the screen. The thin black bezel around the screen is optional, but I did prefer to have it on. It goes together in a very similar fashion as the frame. The bezel just sits in place over the frame edge and attaches with similar straight and angled brackets to hold each of the pieces together. Once all the pieces are assembled, there are four springs that you'll attach to the back of the bezel and the frame to help hold everything in place. Another optional accessory is the LED backlight kit from Elite Screens. This includes the LED strips, controller, power source, and remote. Now honestly, there wasn't a great area to install these strips on the frame. It was a little difficult, but they did just barely squeeze into the channel shown here. Once you figure out where you want the two strips to start and the control box to hang, it was just a matter of peeling off the backing on the self-adhesive LED strips and pressing them into place. When you come to where the two strips meet, you can cut them along the designated splice area and get a fairly small gap between them. I wanted to make sure that the lights weren't obstructed too much and to minimize the amount of things hanging down, so I carefully taped and tucked the wires up inside of the frame. To hang the screen, there are four brackets to attach to your wall. You'll only be able to hit a stud with one screw, so do yourself a favor and grab some better drywall anchors. The ones included aren't the best. Find a few studs towards the top of the screen area to secure the top two brackets. 
be sure to make them roughly the same height for a level screen. There's a few inches of adjustment that you can use on the brackets, and it's a good idea to use a level when setting the screen up to verify. The distance between the top and bottom brackets will depend on which screen size you get, but just measure off the back of the frame attachment channels to get an accurate distance. These are just to make sure that the bottom of the screen is not protruding off the wall. You'll want to leave the brackets loose so they can slide up and back down during the final installation. When attaching the screen, you'll hook the bottom brackets onto the screen frame, raise the screen over the top brackets, then lower it back down. The top brackets should be holding the screen up and the bottom brackets keeping the screen tight against the wall. Then you're ready to sit back and enjoy some movies. All right, so after having the screen in my room for several weeks, I've been pretty impressed with its overall performance. First, let's go ahead and talk about the Cinegray 3D material. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Cinegray 3D material is an ambient light rejecting screen that has a gain of 1.2. Now, when industries and companies talk about gains of screens, they're talking about the amount of light that is reflected back to the viewer. The industry standard is 1.0, which is the amount of light that is reflected back when shown on a piece of magnesium carbonate, which essentially is a matte white screen. Now, if a screen has a 1.2 gain, that means they're reflecting back 20% more light than the 1.0 gain screen. So this screen has a slightly higher reflection rate back to the viewer thus a higher gain. This screen has a viewing angle of 90 degrees before you start seeing a noticeable difference in the brightness of the image. Higher gain and ALR screens will have a narrower viewing angle before the image starts getting darker, but from roughly 12 feet back, there was no noticeable difference in brightness from any of our seats. Now, I did not have my Panasonic AE8000U professionally calibrated for this screen review, but after just a few adjustments, I was able to get deep blacks and a natural looking image on the ALR screen. Now, it's really hard to get an accurate representation of what the screen looks like with the camera, so just keep that in mind as you're looking at these images and video. Everything is going to look a little bit bluer than it really is, and again, that's just not being able to correctly white balance everything with the lights on versus the lights off and me adjusting everything in between, so again, just keep that in mind. Now, one thing I really like about the ALR screens is how deep you can get the blacks to look with a projector. It's one thing that I've noticed with testing white, gray, and ALR type materials is you can usually get the deepest blacks with the ALR material, but of course that's also going to depend on your room and your projector. But in my setting, I was always able to get the deepest blacks with the ALR type material. And since this screen has a higher gain, you still have punchy colors and a nice contrast between dark and lighter images. I don't have any way of measuring color accuracy, but I felt that the colors were fairly true to life and the skin tones look fairly natural. No one ever really looked like a Smurf or the Hulk. So although the contrast and deep blacks were a strong point for the Cinegray 3D material, there was a downside. A lot of your higher gain and ALR screen materials will suffer from this, and that is the sparkles. Now this really only happened when there was an extremely bright image or white image on the screen and when there was in the brightest parts of the, uh, the screen there, there was a little bit of sparkling coming back. The best way to describe that is it almost looks like there's a little bit of glitter on the screen and when it's really bright shining back at you. And it's not too bothersome for me. Um, it really wasn't extremely noticeable. In fact, most people didn't even notice it going on when they were watching the show and I'd have to go back and point it out to them. Even then, they really didn't even notice it, so it wasn't a huge deal, but just be aware with these higher gain and ALR screens, some of them can suffer from the sparkles. One other thing that these ALR screens can suffer from is hot spotting. Now, hot spotting is when one area of the image, usually the center, is brighter than the rest of the screen. So your edges and corners are going to be a little bit darker than what the center image is showing. I can say that with my time with this screen, I have not noticed any hot spotting. Now let's dive into how the ALR material worked with some ambient light present. Again, the colors aren't going to be 100% accurate with the camera, but you'll get a decent idea of how the screen reacts with outside light. Now we don't often have the direct overhead lights on while watching anything, but here you can see the lights on at 100%, 50%, 70%, Ten percent and off. With the overhead lights on at 25%, there's still a good amount of washout, but the screen still maintains a decent image. It's more likely that we have the lights on over to the side area around the bar or dartboard. The Cinegray 3D material was able to maintain excellent contrast even with the lights on 50% off to the side. The worst source of light for ALR screens is light coming from the same direction as the projector. 
If I opened up my blackout curtains, the image quickly lost contrast and looked washed out. Now to touch on the LED kit, installation was pretty quick and painless, but unfortunately you will have the controller box and IR receiver hanging down from the bottom of the screen somewhere. The remote is a credit card style remote and has to be pointed directly at the IR receiver, and even then you might have to hit the buttons a few times to get the desired color or effect. It has a few functions to choose from, but I noticed the functions didn't quite match up with what the remote said it was supposed to do. There were several color options which all worked as they should. Brightness can be adjusted from a subtle glow to a fairly bright backlight. Personally, I don't mess with the lights a whole lot behind the screen down here. I just pick a color and leave them on all the time, except when I'm watching a serious movie. Then I'll turn them completely off so they aren't distracting. Now outside of assembly and performance, one thing I liked about the Aeon series screens was that small black bezel going around the outside of the screen. It gave it a separated look from the wall and allowed you just a little bit of wiggle room when adjusting your projector. Now while using this screen, I have been very happy with the black levels and the overall image quality that I've been able to get from the Cinegray 3D material, as well as the amount of ambient light that it can reject in our basement. If you have a room that is completely light controlled and don't plan on having any lights on during your movie watching experience, a matte white screen is going to give you the best color representation but for this area down here in our basement, this screen has done extremely well when using more than just our theater area. The Elite Screens Aeon 120 inch Cinegray 3D screen is priced just under $600 and the LED kit comes in at $120. I'll leave links down in the description below if you guys are interested in these products or any other products from Elite Screens. Thank you to Elite Screens for sending this product out for review. Hope you guys found it helpful. Thanks for watching Life of Bliss and I will see you soon.